Okay, let's take a look at some specific numerical example to see what's going on. How do we calculate this term C tilde n? Assuming you know the value of f sub k because you know the function f at a certain discretized time. All right, so in this case, let's say we say, we say capital N is equal to 4. This 4 here represents, you have like 4 data point. 4 data point. 4 data point, OK? 4, by the way, is the same thing as 2 raised to the power 2. The reason I say that is because I'm preparing for the future lecture as well. So now, if you let n equal to, capital N equal to 4, then according to equation for the f of k, that equation will become like this. Take a look. You can see you have 1 over capital N. That term is right here, 1 over capital N. Okay? And then you're supposed to have summation of c delta n times w raised to the power of minus nk. Is that right? But if you are carefully, you can see that this summation right here, the summation on n, if you write in the long form, it is the same thing like c delta uh, 0. We will, the summation go from small n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1. So capital N minus 1 in this example is equal to 3. And the reason is because capital N is equal to 4. Okay? So let's see what happens. The summation go from small n equal to 0. So you have C to the 0 times W minus N is 0 times K. Plus summation now small n equal to 1. So you have C delta 1 times W raised to the power minus small n is equal to 1 times K is there. And then plus, now small n equal to 2. So you have C delta 2 W minus small n, which is equal to 2, and this is k. And then finally plus, small n is equal to capital N minus 1, but capital N minus 1 is equal to 3. So now you have c delta 3 times w minus small n is equal to 3, capital K. So this whole thing in here, basically give you the answer for f of k. f of k. Now, don't forget the value of k, the index k here, the index k here can go from 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 also. So for that, if you let k equal to 0, if you let k equal to 0, then you have 0 here for k, a 0 here for k, a 0 here for k, and a 0 here for k. Then you should have a formula to compute f sub 0 in terms of c tilde. And that is exactly the first equation that I show you here. Because if you take a look at the first equation of 5a, that's exactly what you get for f0. On the other hand, if you let k equal to 1, if you let k equal to 1, you let k equal to 1, you let k equal to 1, let k equal to 1, let k equal to 1. Then, as you can see from here, w raised to the power minus 0 times 1, it is still equal to 1, okay? And that way you can obtain f of 1, and that is shown in the second equation right there. And the reason you see this guy right here is equal to 1, 
The reason is because W raised to the power minus 0 times 1, it is equal to 1. Anything raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. And similarly, when you let k equal to 2, or let's say final, let k equal to 3. Let k equal to 3. For example, k equal to 3. Let k equal to 3 in here. Let k equal to 3 in here. Let k equal to 3 in here. k equal to 3 in here. Then you get that formula right there. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that based on the second equation, the second part of equation 5, second part of equation 5, which is this one right here, it is, can be represented in the matrix notation as shown in equation 5a. Now, don't forget, in equation 5a, what we want to solve is C tilde. In other words, in equation 5a, the unknown is this vector right here. That is the unknown. That is the unknown. So for example, take a look at equation 5a uh, one more time. The unknown is this vector right there. That is the unknown. That is the unknown vector. So how do you solve for the vector C tutor in equation 5a? Well, basically, what you need to do is to take the inverse of this coefficient matrix, and then you multiply with the right-hand side vector f. And that is exactly shown on the next slide. So on the next slide, as you can see, we're supposed to take the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Well, it turned out that the inverse of that coefficient matrix, it turned out to be equal to this guy right here. We can prove analytically very easily. Okay? The inverse of that matrix turned out to be as shown in the right-hand side there. So, what does that mean? Again, if you look at equation 5a, you look at equation 5a, if you take the invert of the coefficient in the front of it, and then you multiply that with the right-hand side vector, you should be able to solve for the unknown vector C tilde. And the invert of that coefficient matrix, I already show you, we already obtained it right here. That is the inversion, the inversion of the matrix is given on the right-hand side. So now, we get the answer. The answer is the unknown vector C tilde is equal to the inverse of the coefficient matrix, and that inverting matrix is equal to this fellow right there, and multiply with this vector right here. Now, remember, this vector f shown on the right-hand side of equation 6, like f0, f1, f2, f3, they are known. Why they are known? Because corresponding time, corresponding to the discretized time t0, t1, t2, t3, we can measure the value of f at those data points. So basically, this vector f here is the known, or you can say it is the input data by the user, input data. So the user basically input those specific discretized value of the, uh, of the repeated, or what do we call it, uh, periodic function f. So you input those value, and we know how to compute the coefficient matrix in front of it according to equation 6, we should be able to calculate the unknown vector C tilde. Now, as you can see from equation uh, 6, if you want to solve for the vector C tilde, it will involve with 16 complex multiplication. Multiplication and involved with 12 complex addition, complex addition. 
Why? The reason is because all those numbers that I show you in equation 6, they are all complex numbers. So, for example, if you want to calculate, let's say, C delta naught, you have to take this term, W raised to the power 0, 0, multiply with F0, and then plus W raised to the power 0 times 1, multiply with F1, plus W raised to the power 0 times 2, times F2, plus W raised to the power 0 times 3, times F3. That will help you to figure out C tilde 0. And that alone will require, as you can see, for multiplication and three addition. And the same thing you have to do for C tilde 1, C tilde 2, and C tilde 3. That's why totally you need 16 multiplication and 12 addition, all with a complex number. And so equation 6 clearly tells you that to figure out the unknown vector C tilde, you have to do a matrix times a vector. And depending on the size of the system, it could be very, very expensive. In this, ex in this specific example, because we assume the size n, capital N, is equal to 4. That means you have 4 data points, 4 data points, 4 data points. Therefore, the size of the coefficient matrix is n by n. And the size of the right-hand side vector f is 4 by 1. But if the size is bigger than 4 data points, the matrix time vector operation here could be very expensive. Uh, again, 